Oops. And here we go. You'll get a couple of replays there and we'll watch it again in real time. So it's hard to pick up what happens here, particularly if you're on a jumpy screen. So I will pause it at our moment of truth here. Hits the player's hand right here. So watch it one more time in real time, and then I'll come back and pause it again at the moment of truth. All right, who wants to tackle this one? No volunteers. Vincent, go ahead. Okay, I think one one for, for sure is this hand is, you know, out of his silhouette of the body. So for me, this is definitely a penalty kick. The uh, problem with this is that the... Uh, referee is in a bad angle. He's in line with the player, so he can never see the, the, the handball as it happens. And uh, if he was in a better position, like you said, you know, in previous, you know, lectures, you know, where he should be, you know, way out by, uh, by the edge of the 18-yard uh, box, you know, then he would have seen it. But because he didn't see it, is not giving that penalty I think you know but this is definitely a deflection by hand um, because the hand is off the body I mean it's clearly way off his body and deflected you know uh, an opportunity of a goal there you know so that's what I'm thinking okay so you have PK yeah okay uh, if the, you could see it if the, if the referee could see it if the referee could see it, it yes or if the AR can, you know, can give him, you know, some input on this one, you know, that the hand was out of the body, you know, and he deflected it. Yeah, then, but if you don't see it, then you're not going to be able to give that. Sure. So. Okay. Uh, Mr. Magana, you raised your hand. Did you have something you wanted to add to this? Unmute yourself, please, if you can. All right, Tom Moore. So it's a little hard to see from this particular angle, but the question is, is this also a red card for dog? So if that ball's headed into the upper left-hand corner uh, with no chance of the goalkeeper to get it, it sure looks that way. All right. So you said, you said one word that makes me question if it's dog. So which one did you say that makes me question dog? So. Blech. <laughs> <laughs> not sure anybody want to try to pick up on the one word that mr moore used that makes us question if it's dog so or not Assad. goalkeeper okay that's one word that's not the word robert Damn. Vincy. if if very very perceptive if den denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity means it's obvious, which means we don't have to say if. If we find ourselves saying the word if that had happened, it means it's not obvious that it actually was going to happen. And that means we're probably not going to have dog so. However, Tom, you bring up an interesting point. What do the laws of the game tell us about stopping a shot with our hand? Do we remember this from previous webinars? Yeah, it's illegal. <laughs> it certainly is. Yes, we have a handball. Anybody right. want to chime in on the misconduct aspect of this? 
Do we have no misconduct? Do we have a yellow card or do we have a red card? If you're going to deem this a handball. Jeremy. Uh, I've got my considerations open here and I'm reminded that the player did try to deceive the referee. You think he had time to deliberately deceive the referee here? I think, I think he did when he turned around afterward. Are you, well, I guess, are you asking about the deception coming during play or afterward? No, I'm, I'm talking about I'm during the play. Deception. Okay. Uh, yeah. Forgive me. Yeah, no, be, no, no. Maybe out of my depth. No, no, no time there to, <laughs> to, to think about blocking that shot in a way to deceive the referee. Yeah. Totally fair. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Kevin, thoughts? Yeah, I would just say this is probably more on the stopping and promising attack um, area. Yeah. Where the ball is, tr- is going towards goal and it's, um, and maybe even going towards that purple player on the, on the front there in front of the keeper. Um, but I think it's going to be more on the stomping, stomping and promising attack area. Yeah, so what we want to do with misconduct is if somebody takes a shot on goal, but it's not an obvious goal scoring opportunity, meaning there's defenders, there's a goalkeeper, you know, it's not clear if it's actually going to be on frame or not, you know, all those things. If it's not obvious a goal scoring opportunity, but someone takes a shot and it gets blocked with a hand and you decide it's handball, it's automatically a yellow card. If you block a shot with your hand and you deem that to be a handball, it's a yellow card at minimum. And then you have to take all the dog so considerations uh, into consideration and decide if you're going to give a red card or not. But if someone blocks a shot with a handball, who's not the goalkeeper, <laughs> then we're at minimum going to want to have a yellow card. So that handles our misconduct portion. Do, is everybody in agreement that this is a handball? Is there anybody who doesn't think this is a handball? Hiro. Uh, it looks for, from the clip that uh, the ball may have hit the plate on the knee first, and then it hits the handball. But it's not clear from what I'm seeing. So if it hit the knee first, he has played the ball with the legal part of the body, and then it's not a handball. Okay. What does the law say about the arm being away from the body in an unnatural position. Well, you would dash. Uh, it doesn't look to me like it's that unnatural. It's, it's position at this point of the hand. If it hits the, if it hits that knee first. All right, Victor, do you want to comment on that? Uh, yes, he definitely made himself larger. So that is a handball. And unfortunately he's there. So it's going to be a yellow card for him. Definitely, but I also also want to say, just to go a little further, um, to respond to. Hold on, Victor. Stop for just a second. I'll let you go on to that, but I want to button up this this topic first. Okay. If a player has put Victor's one hundred percent correct here. If a player has made himself unnaturally bigger by putting his arms outside of that natural silhouette, even if the ball bounces off the leg like it might have here, if it hits the arm when it's been put in an unnatural position, it's still going to be a handball. So the question about the unnatural position sort of uh, trumps the, the part about whether or not it hit the leg and then bounced up as long as the arm is in an unnatural position. In this case, he's got the arm away from the body. It's outside of the silhouette. It's creating a barrier. And so when it skips off the leg, if it does, and we can't tell, but we're going to say if, if it does and then it hits the arm, we still have a handball because the arm is in an unnatural position. If the hand is in a natural position and, it, and a player plays it off of their own body, meaning if they kick the ball and it comes up and hits uh, their arm, that's very different. But this is not a player playing the ball. And that's an important thing. This is a player who has put his body in the way with the arm in an unnatural position. So I want to make sure we clarify that first. Now, Victor, please go on with what you were going to comment on next. Okay, thank you. So um, in this situation also, considering where the center referee is, um, we proximity to, or we reference to whether he's able to see exactly what happened at the time the ball actually hit that player. He is not in a position to make credible decision here. So this is where the center referee can and should as his own um, help the referee in getting the decision right. Yeah, guys, so Victor's spot on here. This is actually not only a handball clip, 
this is also an AR involvement clip. So Victor, well done for, for the perception there. The challenge with this one is that the only way a referee ever gets an angle of you to actually see this definitively is if he takes a very, very extreme position. He'd have to be way out here somewhere to actually have the best angle of view. Because even if he comes to the right by three or four or five yards, there's still another defender that's right in front of this player in purple. This guy right here. If he comes over to here, at the moment this shot gets taken, there's no chance he's going to be able to glimpse, you know, sort of glimpse through all of this and see what the starting position of that hand was. It's just not possible. And so this is a situation where if the AR is able to perceive this, we want the AR to be involved. Now, there's going to be a question about whether they can, if we're going to be all honest and, and fair to the, to the assistant referee. It's hard to tell if this is a shot or a cross. I do think it's a shot, but it is hard to tell. And we do have a player in an offside position. So there's a potential chance that the AR is going to be too focused on a potential offside decision here. But the one saving grace we may have is the player in question here on the handball is also the offside line. And so if the AR is going to be staring at anything, it'll very likely be this player who is the offside line, which probably is going to mean the AR can be involved. The question here is should, and this is one of those unusual situations because of the position of the referee and the fact that only an extreme position would allow you to see this. We would expect the assistant referee to get involved here. It's a tough one to get involved in. You got to be a hundred percent confident, but if you're able to see it, this is one that the referee is going to be extremely screened from and not able to help with. For those of you that have worked with me on games before, you note that this is the exact scenario that I talk about. If you have a handball on the left side of the body on an attacker facing, or excuse me, on the defender's left side of the body facing you as the AR, the referee will very, very likely be screened and you have to be involved here if you can be. So Victor, excellent job there with that, with that pick up there. This is more than anything an assistant referee involvement clip, and it's a tough one. So nice job there. Thank Any you. questions on that? Randy, comment. Yeah, Matt, if uh, you're working a match like this and you don't have comms on and you as an AR see this clearly, do you call the ref over and the ref doesn't come to you for advice? Do you call him over? Do you put a flag up? What's the recommendation there? You know, that's going to depend on the referee and something that you ought to cover in the pregame. Um, I go back and forth on this one, honestly. I, I think there's, there's a lot of risk in putting the flag up, um, but the referee might not come to you if you don't. So um, it's, it's going to be hard to get their attention because this is, you know, just going to go out of bounds for a corner kick and the guy gets surrounded. So if the referee's not, not looking for help, quite honestly, without shouting at him or doing something really extreme, you're going to have a hard time getting their attention. So, you know, the referees that are wearing comms or using beepers, are they going to be the ones the best position to help with this? Um, this happens to you, boy, this, this is the kind of thing you want to have talked about in a pregame. I mean, it's, it's situations like this that are, are the reason we have a pregame to begin with, because this is not an easy decision to get right. It's a hard one for the AR to be involved in, and you have to have talked about it beforehand. Um, if it's me in the game, if I'm the referee, I'm going to ask the assistant referee uh, probably to put a flag up here if they're 100% sure. And if they're following through with all their guidance, meaning they can see it, they should see it, all those things, uh, and they want to jump on it, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them to put the flag up, knowing that what I'm going to do as the referee is walk over there and ask them what the hell just happened. And then they're going to have to describe it for me. And if they're able to describe it clearly, then yeah, I'll go point to the spot for them, no problem. Um, but I'm a referee that welcomes more of that involvement and, and has confidence in my ability to talk my way out of it if I, if I decide you're not confident in that decision. Another referee may not have that same approach. So, um, you know, it's a long way to say there's no good answer here, but you need to talk about it in the pregame. Fair? Yeah, that's a great answer. Thank you, man. Okay. Anything else on this one? Tough clip. All right, Victor, nice job again on that one. Um, we've got time for one more clip, so I want to make sure I, I pick the right one. 
And honestly, I haven't looked at these in a while, so I want to make sure we are picking a good one. So here we go. Ah, not a very good one. Next one's a good one. No, I remember now. Okay. Last clip of the night. Let's watch that one more time. All right. Who wants to take this one on? Taylor, let's hear from you. Nothing, okay, Wendell. So, it's a long ways away, and I believe that's Karen at, in the middle, mm -hmm. with a white badge, so I'm not gonna try to overrule what she says here, but it looks like she might have had a poor angle there. Uh, what I'm seeing is that it looks like the white player makes contact with the ball, but then makes unfair contact with the yellow player, uh, not allowing her to be able to play after that. And then everything after this speaks to me about what does soccer expect here? All the yellow players expect a foul there. And if you watch the body language of all the white players, if you pause it right here, right here, Matt, they all expect the foul to be called right here too. Literally every is flat footed expecting that call. I think this is, call what's expected, yellow card, spa, uh, free kick for yellow going in. Okay. So you have free kick for free kick and yellow card. Anybody else have something different? Want to comment on anything? I'm unmuted now. I was going to say what Wendell, what, a lot of what Wendell says. Everybody, right. everybody expects that foul. It seems like the referee's caught out of position. She can get advice or guidance or I don't know what the word I'm looking for is take a hint from the players on the field. Everybody, including the white team, seems to stop here and want expensive foul. Okay. Anybody else have anything different to add? Anybody disagree with yellow card on this? Christoph, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so from my angle, at least, it looks like if she gets through that player, mm -hmm. she's basically one-on-one -on -one against the goalkeeper. So for me, that would be a dog zone. So you have red card here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have red card here? Leah? Okay, here, I'm unmuted. I believe there was another defender on the far side, so I would not say red card, but I totally agree with Wendell. I think it was a promising attack. Uh, the white player took out a promising attack. There's another white player, though. So I don't say dark, so I say yellow for spa. Okay. Spencer. Uh, promising attack was what I was going to mention as well. I think it, it's not a dog, so distance and direction are missing in my mind for a, for a red card, but clearly a yellow card. Okay, Mike Dishno, anything else different to add? No, nothing, nothing too much different. So big for me, the, the distance is a little bit too great. Uh, but I would say if she doesn't fall here, she has got a pretty good chance of getting in on goal. The defender is never going to get there. So skill level of the player, if she doesn't fall right there, we're 1v1. So that would be the consideration for a red card for me. It's direction to goal. She's going to have control of the ball. Uh, there's no defender close. And the only outlying uh, thing would be her distance from goal. Uh, okay. And quite honestly, I think she can get there. So 
Robert, Vincey, I'm going to call upon you again. Mike said three words, two of them at once, and then the second one uh, or the third one later uh, that have to do with dogs. So which ones were they? I missed the mic. Oh, Matt. Okay. So they were pretty sure and I think. If we're pretty sure, it means it's not obvious. If we think they can do it, it means it's not obvious. So I would agree that the distance is probably good here. Direction, not so much. Possession of the ball for sure. But believe it or not, this defender means it's not exactly clear. Because this player is sprinting dead on. And if that player doesn't get tripped up, this player runs over here. They're about the same distance to a shooting position. And she's coming in at an angle. So definitely a spa situation here, stopping a promising attack, not dog. So last thing I'm going to ask anybody to comment upon, what does the referee do? What could the referee do differently here if they're going to choose not to call a foul? Anybody want to think about that? Jose. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I think what probably – also maybe thought made all the players think that she was calling a foul was that she was running to the spot where the infraction occurred. So maybe if she kind of wait, if she didn't run all the way to the, um, the top of the penalty area um, and just kind of wait, waited more upfield, um, that would kind of give a message that she wasn't calling a foul. Yeah, very good point. The referee by running in here, everything about her body language suggests that she's running to the spot of the foul. And the only reason you spot you run to the spot of the foul is to award the foul. So, you know, in fairness to the referee, there's not much she could have done differently in this scenario. She's appropriately positioned in the run up to this play. This is a perfectly reasonable spot to be in because play is going to the left, play goes to the left, potential challenge here, perfectly positioned to see this. And then you know, there's, there's nothing she can do here. This is just a quick counterattack on a long ball. So positioning-wise, nothing we can ask the referee to do. She's been perfect up to this moment, and this is one of those freak plays. So I think because we're talking about a yellow card situation for this player, what does football expect? I think football expects a foul to be given here. And I think uh, the body language, everything about the player suggests it. So – the simple solution here is to do what the game expects, call the foul, show the yellow card. If for some reason you're not going to, don't run into the space like this referee has done here because that's confusing body language to the players. And so if you're going to wave it off and say no foul, stop where you are, wave it off and say no foul, and get on with the rest of the game. Questions on that? All right, then, as always, I thank you for joining this evening. Uh, I hope this has been a, a good use of time. And we will, next week, we'll do a more traditional presentation on uh, illegal use of the arms so we can come back and talk, talk about that first, uh, that first clip that we looked at. So good discussion tonight, everybody. Thanks again for your participation, and have a great night. Have a great night, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Here.